Vim Deer Milliliter CA Smart Pack එක රුපියල් 85ට දැන් වෙලඳ පොලේ. හරිම සුබදුයි. Tonight on First at Nine, this Monday, the 6th of March, 2023. Assessment. Sri Lanka six periodic review under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights to be held on the 8th and 9th of March in Geneva. No option. Unpopular decisions are crucial for the economy at this juncture, says Foreign Minister Ali Sabri. All the indications are there we are on route if country stabilizes. If the results are there to everybody to see, it's bad for opposition. Crucial talks. The Election Commission to convene tomorrow to discuss the holding of the local government elections. Freedom People's Alliance and the National People's Power urges the Commission to announce a date for the election. We tell the Elections Commission that they have definitely got to indicate tomorrow the date on which this election is to be held. We are not going to be able to get the election. We are not going to be able to get the election. We are not going to be able to get the election. Alliance Finance Mitru Rannai Sevave. Run Pound Cutter, Propel Eklaksha Hatta Dhasaka, Eela Tikaram. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine with Andrew Bernard. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And a very good evening and welcome to Ada Derana 24's English News. New top story for tonight, Sri Lanka's sixth periodic review under the International Govern Covenant on Civil and Political Rights will be held on the 8th and 9th of March in Geneva. According to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, at the request of Sri Lanka, the sixth review will be conducted in hybrid format and will be led by Sri Lanka's permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, Himali Arunathilaka. Sri Lanka's sixth periodic review under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights will be held on the 8th and 9th of March in Geneva. The ICCPR, which was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on the 16th of December 1966 and entered into force on the 23rd of March 1976, aims to ensure the protection of civil and political rights, including the freedom from discrimination, right to equality between men and women, and right to life. Sri Lanka, which acceded to the ICCPR on the 11th of June 1980, has submitted five periodic reports in 1983, 1990, 1994, 2003 and 2013 and has participated in five reviews in 1983, 1991, 1995, 2003 and 2014. The sixth report of Sri Lanka for the periodic review was submitted on the 22nd of February 2019 to the Human Rights Committee. The Human Rights Committee comprises 18 independent experts that monitor the implementation of the ICCPR. According to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, at the request of Sri Lanka, the sixth review will be conducted in hybrid format and will be led by Sri Lanka's permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, Himali Arunathilaka. In addition to Sri Lanka, Egypt, Turkmenistan, Zambia, Peru and Panama will also be reviewed by the Human Rights Committee during the 137th session that will conclude on the 24th of March. Last month, Sri Lanka's national report on the fourth cycle of the Universal Periodic Review was taken into consideration by the UN Working Group on the UPR during its 42nd session in Geneva. The Foreign Minister Ali Sabri revealed that Sri Lankan authorities are optimistic on receiving the IMF bailout package within this month. During an interview with Vion, the Foreign Affairs Minister stated that the President's unpopular decisions are crucial for the economy at this juncture while also claiming that what's good for the country is bad for the opposition. One question that everyone is asking is when do you get the IMF bailout? There have been support extended by India, India in fact for the first country, but there have been of course countries who, are, who have not been very open about it. Right now we are very optimistic. So once again India took the lead and gave that assurance just the way IMF wanted and Paris Club followed that. 
and China had given some sort of an assurance, but it is not compatible with the IMF, but we are still talking to them. So we are very hopeful that China will also, they have their own concerns, but they will also come on, on back on track. So hopefully with all, everybody's support, we will get the IMF bailout within this month. We are very, very hopeful. So you said by end of this month, there will be an announcement. Uh, how optimistic you are? I'm very optimistic. It's not optimistic, it's pragmatic because we have done everything else and you couldn't have asked anything else for Sri Lankans to do. Mm. Our president uh, spoke to uh, managing director of the IMF and all indications are that we are all very optimistic, uh, both uh, in terms of the institutions as well as the country, that it will uh, realize this month. Is China dragging its feet when it comes to extending the support for IMF bailout? And what are the reasons do you think that China has been a lagger when it comes to its support? No, I wouldn't say so. The China has its own concerns because China had been a huge lender during the last 10 years or so. And naturally, they are very careful because they have lent to so many countries. Anything which happens here could become a precedent. So we need to give them a little bit of time because they are not used to like the Paris Club and the other countries who have been traditional creditors and lenders for a long period of time. Do you think the Chinese are responsible for the debt crisis, not only in your country but globally as well? Because that's the perception like for sure when it comes to China. But I don't agree with that to be honest. I think Chinese have not come forcefully and given us money and said that take it and put it into this project. We have designed our own project and sought funding. So Chinese have come and given to us. We should understand to which you put those funding. You must put the funding into a project which will give you return so that you can pay back. So if we have not done that properly, you can't blame anyone else. So it's our problem, probably. Our, I would say that Sri Lanka went through this because of bad debt, bad policies. Basically, we are not as, as a government proponent of blame game. We are here to work with everybody and reclaim our country. Because of the IMS policies, you are putting in place policies which will lead you to get the bailout package. Now, do you think that it will lead to political crisis? What is happening right now is politically motivated protest by the opposition like any other country. So there is huge difference between those two that will continue to take place because in democracy that's how people have the right to express themselves. So this is nothing to do with anything of uh, anything of the sort what we saw last year. Not only IMF, whether with the IMF or not, these reforms are going to be unpopular. We know that. Governments know that. And the problem that Sri Lanka facing today is populist policies without looking at the restructure, the, the structural uh, alteration on that and the long-term sustainability of it. I'm glad that uh, my president are uh, taking them on, head on, despite this is very unpopular, taking those decisions. And the results are there for everybody to see. All the indications are there, we are on route. That's where the opposition get little restless mm -hmm. because they know they are losing the opportunity right now because if country stabilizes, mm -hmm. if the results are there to everybody to see, it's bad for opposition. Good for the country means bad for opposition, unfortunately. And by 10 years, hopefully, we are laid the foundation whether we are in government or not is not the issue. If my country is back on track for development, a sustainable growth path, and that's what it means. Now the Election Commission will convene a special meeting tomorrow to decide the new date for the 2023 local government election. The head of the government press, the secretary to the Ministry of Finance, the Inspector General of Police are also expected to join the discussion. Recently the Supreme Court issued an interim injunction to the President via the Attorney General and the Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, preventing the withholding of funds allocated for elections by the budget of 2023. Furthermore, another interim injunction was issued by the Supreme Court, preventing the withholding of funds earmarked for the government press to print ballot papers required for the elections. Now, independent parliamentarian Professor G. L. Pires says that the Election Commission should definitely announce a date for the postponed local government election tomorrow. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, Professor Pires said that most of the election candidates have now become destitute due to the election postponement as many candidates have resigned from employment. Any country in any part of the world at any time has the argument been put forward that elections can be held only when money is available for that purpose. If that argument is allowed to prevail, then we can say with certainty that other national elections will also not take place in Sri Lanka. There is a presidential election due next year. After that, there are parliamentary elections. If all of this depends on the caprice 
the arbitrary decision of one person, then there are not going to be national elections held in this country at the time stipulated by the law. That means the death knell of democracy. It is that calamity that was prevented by this timely and courageous decision of the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. Consequently, the government is now compelled very much against its will to hold this election because of a binding judgment which has been handed down by the highest court in the country. On the 19th of March, that is just a few days away, 339 local bodies in this country are compulsorily dissolved by operation. This means that members who have been elected to those bodies by the votes of the people of our country all have to go home. They can no longer function. And the entire gamut of their functions and responsibilities will then pass to unelected officials, representatives of the executive branch of government. That is not democracy, that is the opposite of democracy. Not only that, as many as 3,500 public officials in this country have been reduced to a helpless position for no fault of their own. They have submitted their nomination papers, they are candidates for this election. They cannot go to work, they cannot get salaries, they become destitute. All these problems are urgently crying out for an immediate solution. And that solution is now in the hands of none other than the Elections Commission of Sri Lanka. There is a special meeting of the Elections Commission tomorrow. And we tell the Elections Commission that they have definitely got to indicate tomorrow the date on which this election is to be held. They cannot shirk that responsibility anymore. There is simply no credible or acceptable excuse. Now, member of the National People's Power, Tilvin Silva, reiterated the stance of their party, stating that the Election Commission should announce a nearest possible date to hold the local government election. Speaking at a media briefing in Colombo, he further stated that the expiration of the term of office of local government bodies may adversely affect the people in the north. We know that the president and the government will attempt to play more and more tricks to prevent the election. We should not allow this to happen. The Election Commission should announce the earliest possible date to hold the election. We are saying this because the tenure of the local government bodies will anyway end after the 20th of March. It cannot be extended. Therefore, after the 20th of March, there will be no members or chairman. We already know that the provincial councils do not exist. As such, the parliament will be the only body carrying public representatives. All the other subordinate bodies will be abolished. This can specially affect people in the north. Another problem may arise when the people in the north lose all their representatives. It is necessary to announce a date for the election considering these matters as many serious issues could arise in the future. The claims of holding an election after stabilizing the country are baseless. We are living in a country which can't even afford to finance an election. There is no improvement in the country and they are making inaccurate remarks. The artificial appreciation of the rupee is not relevant to this matter at all. Welcome back. Now, the LMD Nielsen IQ Business Confidence Index plummeted to a seven-month low in February 2023. The analysts by LMD accordingly to the index pointed out that the business sentiment is heavily affected by concerns of corporate leaders on the recent tax hikes. However, the LMD went on to say that the business sentiment may pick up if the IMF package is received. Providing an analysis of Sri Lanka's business sentiment, the LMD highlighted that not since the height of the economic crisis in April, May and June last year has the nation's only barometer of business confidence fallen to such depths. In April, May and June of 2022, the LMD Nielsen IQ Business Confidence Index shed 16, 17 and 50 basis points respectively to end at 49 on the sentiment scale. Despite rising back to a range of between 76 and 98 since then, the Business Sentiment Index dropped by 23 points to register 63 in February. Elaborating on the drastic drop in the Business Confidence Index last month, the Nielsen IQ's director highlighted that more than inflation, the high tax regime is now the chief concern for businesses, with 55% of corporate leaders saying so in the latest monthly survey. Meanwhile, noting a few sensitivities affecting the business sentiment in the country, the LMD revealed that the uncertainty pertaining to the conduct of the local government polls is a top concern. Furthermore, the magazine elaborated that the announcement of yet another massive hike in the electricity tariff could also add to the current pressure on business sentiment inflicted by high inflation and interest rates. 
Making projections on the business confidence in future, the LMD pointed out that the business confidence may pick up if China provides assurances acceptable by IMF standards. Oil prices slipped today after China set a lower than expected target for economic growth this year at around 5% and as investors cautiously awaited US Federal Chair Jerome Powell's testimony this week. Meanwhile, news that the UA will not leave the organization of petroleum exporting countries also impacted the market. Brent crude futures were down 1.5% at $84.53 a barrel at 12.10 p.m. GMT. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were also down 1.5% at $78.47. Both crude benchmarks settled more than $1 higher after two sources told Reuters a report that the United Arab Emirates was considering leaving OPEC was inaccurate. China's closely watched growth outlook announced yesterday was lower than its 5.5% gross domestic product growth target set last year. However, according to foreign media reports, policy sources had told a range as high as 6% could be set for 2023. Meanwhile, oil prices are likely to be impacted by rate hikes across the world as global central banks tighten monetary policy over fears of increasing inflation. The United States Federal Reserve's Chair Jerome Powell will testify to Congress tomorrow and on Wednesday, where he will likely be quizzed on whether large hike rates are needed in the world's largest oil-consuming country. The United States' future rate hikes are also likely to depend on what the February payroll reports reveal on Friday, followed by the February inflation report due next week. And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Join us again tomorrow for the very latest news at the very same time. Have a pleasant evening and good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.